Hello and welcome back to Realism Tips. I am returning on my Dainani here to showcase various different hunting behaviors. I'll probably be dipping into some other animals as well to better showcase certain aspects, but for the most part we'll just be trying to use this one here. So for hunting, the main rule of thumb is always going to be risk and reward. Hunting is innately going to be very risky no matter what you're doing. Even what seems to be very simple and easy prey could turn into a lifelong side effect or disaster for yourself if it injures you in just the right way. For example, a uh, bunny could seem like a very easy prey animal until it happens to kick you right in your eye, causing you to go blind for the rest of your life. So even very simple seeming objects and things can have very lasting consequences. And it's always fun to try and roleplay out what those may be. And also roleplay, of course, is going to take a factor in deciding even what hunts are worth it. So please do bear that in mind whenever you're playing a carnivore on the server. We try to implement natural limitations through our rules but ultimately it's also going to be up to the player to decide what is worth it and what is not. Risk and reward are inherently going to be a factor in everything that you do. And sometimes something that would normally be very risky is not in a specific circumstance, and maybe that makes it worth it. Whereas in any other circumstance, maybe it wouldn't be. So it's just things to consider. Of course, rules are going to trump everything, so please make sure you read through the rules, especially hunting rules, whenever you're about to play a carnivore, just to make sure that you're brushed up on most recent changes and what is currently being enforced and what is currently being considered realistic. Sometimes animals will have notes in their profile itself about a specific type of prey item they'll be wanting to go for first and foremost, and sometimes they will not. You can use these, of course, as rule sets and guiding points if it's within the profile itself. For example, maybe profile says that Dainani is going to prefer to go after any small target. Therefore, if I were to see a small animal in a herd with a large animal, I wouldn't go for the large animal, especially alone. I would choose to go for the small animal. So that is going to be just something to consider anytime you are making any changes. Okay, so hunting in this game is going to be different than some other games like Beast of Bermuda, for example, because Path of Titans does not have smell. You have only sight and sound. So as you can hear, when I'm walking on this, There's quite a lot of rock shifting and crunching noises. When I'm walking on the grass, there's definitely kind of a bit more muted sounds, but it's pretty similar. If we come up here to the rock, it's a bit more of muffled thuds. So if I'm trying to sneak up on something over here, but I'm tramping on gravel, it's going to be a little bit easier for prey to notice me than if I'm going over softer footing. So that is going to be something that I can take into consideration. Of course, if you're sneaking, you'd probably be crouching and you'd be trying to avoid some fallen rocks and twigs, trying to keep the cover but not snapping branches, trying to get closer and closer and then go. Pretty much all predators are going to try and get the jump on their prey. The element of surprise is very valuable in determining who ultimately comes out alive. So if you're able to, no matter what your tag is, you're probably going to try and sneak up on something before you just chase it down. On that same subject, animals like Rex that are ambush predators and ambush predators predominantly if they're hunting, they will likely be sneaking. If they're walking normally, then they should be just going about daily life. Patrolling territory are going to get a drink of water. Ambush hunters, if they're hungry, are going to be doing everything they can to stay out of sight. 
That way, if something were to pass me right along there between here and that stump, they could just run out and get them. On the opposite side of the spectrum, if you're an ambush predator and say our prey is all the way up on the top of that hill, we're sneaking, we're sneaking, we're sneaking through the bushes, we're doing great, they don't see us. Oh, uh, we've got quite a bit of open area here, well let's try it. And then they see us and run away and sound the alarm. A lot of ambush predators in real life are just going to stop here. They're just going to stand up and they're going to walk away. Better luck next time. A lot of hunts IRL will actually fail. Uh, the vast majority of them will fail instead of succeed. So don't be discouraged, floating rock. So don't be discouraged if you don't pull off the perfect ambush. It doesn't always happen. It's not always going to happen. It's an unrealistic expectation to have. And it's better to give others the experience and grace to stand up and walk away, especially as an ambush. Now, if we are pursuit or endurance and a sound alarm we get up and go away, okay, yeah, now we can chase them. In fact, a lot of pursuit hunters will be driven to movement. So think of like your dog, for example. You're sitting there and you're sitting there and you're sitting there and then something moves, oop, time to chase it. So that's just something to kind of also bear in mind is that hunting styles are going to differ between species. Dainani in particular is actually going to be a pursuit hunter. So they're going to be more prone to chasing after movement as they see it like that. You can even replay this out in small ways, like, ooh, that leaf is falling, time to chase it and jump and bite and wear it down. And endurance hunters are going to go for more so long damage over time, so there are going to be predators that are more likely to bleed out their prey, open up a lot of wounds along their side, and then just let time take its toll. And Pursuit will just kind of chase and bite and chase and bite until something happens. Either they get their hunt or they fall or they realize it's just not going to be worth it and give up. So that's just some different ways they can kind of incorporate those different hunting tactics and just ways to consider them as a whole. Of course, Ambush is predominantly going to be sit and wait and then jump out of bushes and bite. That's going to predominantly be ambush hunting. Uh, of course, you're not strictly limited to this unless it's profile. Sometimes if you are a Rex and you get that bone break on something, but they're trying to run away, you can pursue them. Just consider again, what is realistic for the situation? What is realistic for your dinosaur and profile and what falls within rules and you'll be golden. So, there are a few other questions that you can ask yourself whenever you are about to undergo a hunt or in the event that you feel a hunt amongst your pack members. So, just some questions to ask. Is this worth the risk? Will I be able to compete with any neighboring competition? So, say you do bring something down, but now you're too injured to defend it. Is it worth pursuing at that point? Is it worth the risk of filling up your belly, or is it... You're just going to get more injured only to immediately lose your kill. And of course, when deciding your target, consider your, your options. You want to usually go for the oldest and the youngest. They are going to be the weakest. If you go for a, an adult and healthy member, then you may get ultimately more out of it, but it may come with greater risk because they're in their prime. They're more likely to hurt you. Is that really worth it? And again, and say that's just one species heard. Again, if you're looking at multiple different options and you see something that's small and low risk or medium and high risk or large and low risk, what is worth it to you? Would something as small as me even go for something that's large and low risk if I'm by myself? Would it just be better to go for the smallest, lowest risk thing that I would have the most chance of bringing down. Or if I'm with a pack, should I go for the medium risk option and we could potentially get something to fill our bellies. 
even large low risk things, say it's a uh, Namargosaurus on Death Scars, may just not be worth trifling with because one hit from them maybe could, you know, put us in the same position as that. Break a bone or crush a skull or just anything really that prevents you from hunting or moving correctly and those could have lasting effects in a fight. So you just want to assess your options and you want to go with what makes sense for you. Typically, smaller items are going to be smaller or lower risk. Uh, medium options, somewhere in the middle, and the larger something is, the higher risk it is just on account of its mass. Of course, if you're matching body sizes and types to it, say I'm this small little thing here and I am trying to go after something very big, that's not going to be super realistic or worth it. If I'm something very large, I'm going after something small. Is it even worth expending that energy to catch the small thing? Like a Rex trying to hunt a Dainani, if it does immediately get the ambush, I, I as a Dainani am just going to run away from it. I'm going to go over all this ter terrain that the Rex can't navigate as easily and I'm just going to be gone. Is it worth trying to chase something that fast and agile when you could just wait for the next thing to come along and be caught unaware? and something that may even provide you more food than what a little Dainani would. Just all things to really bear in mind as you go about your hunts and assess the opportunities that you find before you. And game is not going to be predictable. You never know what's going to come across. So always just think about that. Let's say one of your pack mates falls against a rival carnivore. So you're going to have to ask yourself a few different things when it comes time to assess whether you need to challenge for that fallen pack mate's body or not. And there are a few different key points that Curly brings up that I think are very helpful for assessing whether or not it's worth it. So is this opportunity for your fallen pack mate going to be worth the injury you'd sustain fighting for it or even the loss of another beloved pack member? Are you or any of your pack mates near starvation. Is this meal going to be a life or death for you anyway? So, and therefore, is it going to be worth challenging something that's obviously dangerous enough to you to kill one of your pack mates? Are you cannibalistic as a species? All carnivores currently can eat another member of their own species, even social animals like Dainani but Dainani would only go out of their way to do so in certain circumstances. In this particular case, social animals will only go after young, unaffiliated members of their own species. So if a hatchling came across me right now, I could eat it. But think to yourself, in any other circumstances would a Dainani really eat a member of its own pack, especially an adult member? That adult member likely had a place within the standings. It was probably a sibling, a mate, a partner, a friend. Even if they weren't super, like, dominant or anything, they still had relationships with your dinosaur in order to exist in a pack setting. And therefore, would your dinosaur even want to eat them? I do know circumstances where somebody will challenge something just to mourn them, but also, just bear in mind if that then goes into waste or KFS, so just think about those kinds of interactions and what is realistic for your species. If you're a highly cannibalistic species and you see one of your own fall, you're probably not going to care all that much, let's be real. So just think about it. Again, assess what is realistic for the profile I'm playing what fits within rules, and what makes sense for my specific circumstances. It's just all little things to think about like that. So when hunting for younger members, there's a few different ways that you can try and think about getting them the hunting experience. So nothing is born knowing perfectly how to hunt. It's something that they have to learn, skills that they have to hone over time. They can do this through play. You can run and jump and dash and dance and uh, play fight your siblings or even your parents and 
learn how to move, which in turn will help you learn how to hunt later. Crouching, socking, jumping, again, just like biting at things. These are all play behaviors, and these are all things that are going to help young carnivores learn how to hunt. But nothing is the best teacher like experience. So young carnivores will learn best by watching and then doing. However, you have to assess what is appropriate for your young to see. So you can bring very young members along on a hunt and seclude them in bushes to hide and to observe and to learn. But what you have to bear in mind is that youngsters are new to this. They see something scary charging out at them. They may just forfeit the hunt accidentally just by calling and showcasing their own distress. If you put them too close to the action, they could get trampled and they could die. Um, as they get older, they can start to actually tag along on the hunts and stalk and move and groove and do the things that they need to do. But they're still an experience. They still haven't actually taken anything down. Even if you as a player have hunted on a Deinonychus a thousand times, this is that particular Deinonychus' first attempt at a hunt, they may just not know how to. And it's better to roleplay that in experience. They're not going to be perfect, they may panic, and they may call off a hunt early. And that's the risk that you're going to take when you bring young and experienced members along in game is that they don't know. They're gonna have to learn. So just bear that in mind when taking your young along. But if you get to full adulthood and you still haven't ever hunted anything for yourself, you still don't know how to hunt. So you're still gonna have those same reactions, those same mistakes, those same fears, those same consequences. So. Just think about that too. Whenever you're hunting, it can very much make a difference. And again, it's okay to fail. Most carnivore hunts do in real life. I know that this is a game. I know that there's a lot of fail safe mechanics and things are meant to be more 50 50 than not. But that's not how real life works. Real life, you'd be missing 9 times out of 10. So, bear that in mind. It's okay to fail. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to give up. And that gives a good experience to those that you're hunting as well. When you do have those realistic moments of, Oh crap! I'm in over my head. I need to get out of here. Even if you aren't necessarily. It's just a part of stepping out of that gamer mindset and stepping into the role as an actor on the server. Another way that you can showcase your hunting style and type is in the actual kinds of damage that you try and do. So I may show hunting clips at some point if I am able to acquire them, but Path of Titans in general is a very laggy mess of a game when it comes to large players in the same area. So especially if you're trying to incorporate a pack on, it's not always going to be super clean. When hunting though, just try not to wedge into that lack of mesh and just take advantage of it. Uh, let me see here. Okay, so we can kind of use this tree as an example. So realistic ways to bite a tree would be coming up, not meshing, and biting. Unrealistic ways would be to shove, shove my entire head here, bite, 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 bite bite. Is one of those technically going to be more effective in this game? Yes. Is it going to be especially realistic or even fair to your other player? No. So try and keep that in mind when actually come, going into combat of any kind. So you can go up to another player, you can kind of come around them and you can bite and then you can run away to avoid any injury. You can run up the other side, you can bite. Oh, I missed, so well, time to run back out. That's ultimately, especially for something like a Pursuit or Endurance Hunter, going to be the more realistic way to hunt. You want to avoid entry, so you don't want to be standing directly on top of them, biting them, and getting hit back. 
ultimately face sinking is just not really something that happens in nature. It's not conducive. Even a very small scratch can lead to a life-threatening infection. So bear that in mind. The best defense is just not to get hit. So you run in, you bite, you run out, goodbye. And you just keep doing that and you wear them away, and you wear them away, and you wear them away, and eventually something happens. They fall, or you guys give up, or one of the pack dies. Larger, bulkier animals like the Tyrannosaurus Rex can get a little bit more away with coming up to something and just biting, biting, as that is the ambush style of hunting. They'll just wait for something to come along and then they'll attack it. But the thing with that too is that you don't want to be wedging into this unrealistic mesh. Yes, I can be standing here and I can just be biting something forever until it dies. But again, that doesn't feel very realistic. That doesn't feel very fair or fun to their player. Especially for an animal like the Rex that already has the bone break ability built in, you'd realistically just go for your bone break bite and then you'd back up and assess. How hurt is this thing? Is this thing going to be able to actually attack me back? Um, can I reposition myself now that I have this advantage to get around it? And get a better angle. I'm not saying it has to just be one bite and done. You can jump in, get a couple good ones, and then you can get out. That's totally fine too. But you don't want to just be sitting there mesh into your opponent and biting. That isn't what we're looking for in the server. So to summarize, don't wedge into meshes try and keep in mind what areas of the body and hunting styles you can incorporate and try and avoid damage wherever you can it's just going to be better for you it's going to make the hunt less risky it's going to prevent further injury or infection on your part it's going to make it so that you're healthier should a competitor see your fallen prey and decide that that looks pretty tasty for themselves and that they want to take it away from you Whereas if you just stand and bite something forever, that's not going to necessarily be the case. So just assess again the situation, what works for you, what makes sense for you, and what makes sense for your prey. Before we get into the final tip here, I am going to showcase some of those videos that we had discussed or that I had mentioned previously. So the first one here is from Meat Sleeps, link in the description below. And this is about the prime example of ambush hunting that I think I could get. This is pretty much exactly how I'd want to see Rexes be played. So you can see here that they are sitting solitary in some bushes and they are pretty unmoving and letting the herd come to them. The herd, however, does still give them pretty wide bursts, so they sneak up, crouch to the rest of the herd. And as you'll see later on in the video, they take their time and they pause and they assess and move when they think they won't be seen. This allows them to close the gap and the herd for the most part doesn't really notice anything. I will pretty much let this video play out as is because I think it's a great example and I just really wanted to showcase that here. Uh, the combat that does come later on I do think kind of falls into the meshing issue a bit, a bit more face sinking for me than I personally would like to see, but at that point I can't understand why it happened so I still think this is a very good example of a hunt.
Okay, presently it is nighttime, but I can showcase this now anyway. Let's pretend that it's daytime. I just spent all that time hunting this tree and boo, it really wore me down. I've been hunting for four hours now. Not in actual time, but like in game time. And it's been hot and it's been a long hunt and I'm exhausted. Before you even eat, sometimes you just need to go and you need to rest under a tree and you need to cool down. That's going to be especially true in larger animals, especially during the high heat of the day. Think of something like a big cat. Cheetahs exert a lot of energy in order to take down their prey. And sometimes they aren't successful, but they'll expend all that energy in a hot part of the day anyway. And so they'll still need to spend a few minutes resting. Cheetahs are very frail, but they'll still spend the valuable time that they have with their kill just relaxing, trying to bring their body temperature down, trying to bring their heart rate and breathing down before they're even able to eat. So if you're in a particularly strenuous hunt in a particularly hot part of the day as a particularly large animal, it may behoove you to actually just take a moment and sit down and dress, even if you aren't actually that hurt, so to speak, and just Take that time to kind of recuperate your stamina and then you can go ahead and eat. Of course, if you're starving to death, you can probably manage a few bites, but then you can also take some time to relax. It's not all about a rush after all. You can take those little quiet moments to showcase that ability to have the downtime as the animal. Animals aren't always hunting, fighting, having kids. Sometimes hunt animals are just resting. They are just sleeping. And that's just true in general, no matter what kind of animal it is. So never forget the downtime too. Hunting is important, but a lot of carnivores will spend the majority of their time sleeping to conserve their energy for the next hunt. So it's important to find the balance in those things. Games, of course, are going to be very fast paced. So it's just going to be what it's going to be that you may have to hunt more often than you'd realistically have to. Every single hunt is going to be different. Every single situation is going to be different. Uh, just try and keep these general guidelines in mind and I'm sure you'll do just fine on your hunts. I will go ahead and leave it off here, I think, as the sun is starting to come up. And if you have any questions about anything that was discussed here or showcased here, go ahead and hop over to the Discord and ask an assistance or acting questions. Uh, we'd be happy to have you there. You can also reach out to me personally. I'm always available for questions no matter what. I uh, just may take a little bit to get back to you depending, so just let me know. And you can always leave any tips or any questions in the comments as well, as I will be checking and responding to those as well. And if you do have any tips for yourself that you want to see showcase in series like this, then please head over to the Discord in the Realism Tips channels and fill out one of the forms, as I'll be pulling from those primarily. I'll probably be doing more on hunting too, beyond just this kind of showcase and guidelines as it's a very interesting topic and I do like to have some actual real world examples and again I'm just not sure I'm actually going to have that for this particular one so we'll just see what happens in the future but until then we will see you all in the next video and have a great rest of your day and night try and stay safe out there okay bye bye